I want us to look today at direct instruction, which is an instructional strategy that we often use in classrooms that have students with disabilities. So what is direct instruction? Direct instruction is an explicit teacher-directed model of effective instruction developed in the 1960s. Direct instruction can be distinguished from other models of explicit instruction by its focus on curriculum design and effective instructional delivery. Direct instruction provides students clear instruction at their skill level so that they can master content and strategies that allow them to learn at a faster rate than traditional methods. Direct, in direct instruction uh, is one of the most important strategies for teaching students with disabilities. It's recommended by Kentucky's IEP and Lesson Plan Handbook. It's supported by behavioral theory. Uh, students are learning basics and application and higher order skills. It's teacher directed and it is explicit teaching. Some components of direct instruction. Direct instruction is explicit. It is systematic. When we use direct instruction, students are grouped by skill level, not grade level, and the learning is scaffolded. What do we mean by direct instruction is explicit? It means that teachers follow presentation scripts based on communication theory, based on faultless instruction. Instruction ensuring all students master the skills and content in the lesson if the students have the prerequisite skills and they attend to the instruction. And students respond orally or in written form and teachers provide immediate feedback to oral responses, either confirming correct responses or correcting errors. Direct instruction is systematic. The DI programs are built on step-by-step -step design. The material presented increases in complexity and sophistication as students progress through programs. Students are grade, grouped by skill level and not by grade level. This allows teachers to target particular skills in their instructional presentation. Lessons are divided in multiple separate exercises that focus on different aspects of the material and each exercise is part of a skill building track. The learning in differentiated instruction, I'm sorry, in direct instruction is scaffolded. Students receive direct modeling of rules and examples when these are first introduced. Students perform tasks after they have been modeled. As students progress through the instructional sequence, they become more independent. They apply what they've learned to unique situations, and then they review skills and content periodically to make sure that they've met mastery. There are three main components to the design and delivery of a direct instruction program. These are program design, organization of instruction, and the student-teacher interactions. We'll look at these individually. With program design, there are five components. First, careful content analysis that promotes generalization. This is where we teach the big ideas of instruction. Second, clear communication. That's the wording of instruction, as well as how instruction is sequenced and examples are introduced. The third is clear instructional formats. This specifies what teachers are to do or say and what responses students should produce. The fourth is the sequencing of skills. Prerequisites are taught before a strategy is taught. Easy skills are taught before more difficult skills. Strategies and information likely to be confused are separated. Instances consistent with the rule are taught before any exceptions. And then finally, track organization. The activity sequences are taught that teach skills over multiple lessons to ensure firm responding. Within organization of instruction, this centers on a. Instructional grouping. We use flexible skill grouping as compared to tracking. b. Instructional time. Increasing academic learning time. The students are engaged with high success rates. And c. Continuous assessment. We are providing ongoing in-program assessments to inform our instructional practice. The final component are student interaction, is student interactions. This is based on these, these ideas. First, active student participation. So we are increasing our opportunities for students to respond and receive feedback. We use unison responding. We're increasing student responding by having them chorally respond. We use signals. We provide a cue to evoke unison oral responses. The pacing. We promote active student engagement with brisk teacher pacing. 
teaching to mastery, this ensures firm responding over time. Error correction. This minimizes student errors by carefully sequencing our instruction. And when errors do occur, we use careful error correction procedures. We model, lead, test, and then retest. And then finally, motivation. We are enhancing motivation through high levels of student success. In a typical DI lesson, uh, it's going to include explicit and carefully sequenced instruction provided by the teacher who models, along with frequent opportunities for students to practice their skills with teacher-delivered feedback. We call that guided practice. And then on their own, in independent practice. And we do this over time, and that's called distributed practice or review. For example, if the sound mmm appeared the first time, the teacher might say, you're going to learn a new sound. It's my turn to say it. When I move under the letter, I'll say the word. I'll keep saying it as long as I touch under it. Get ready. Hmm. My turn again. Get ready. Hmm. This teacher modeled instruction would then be followed by student practice opportunities. For example, your turn. When I move under this letter, letter you say the sound. Keep on saying it as long as I touch under it. Get ready and then the students would respond. And then the teacher says, again, get ready, and the students would respond. If an error occurred during instruction, the teacher would model the sound, my turn, mmm, use guided practice, say it with me, mmm, and have students practice independently, your turn, get ready. A starting over would be conducted based on this error. This might include starting over at the top of a column or row of sounds that the students get increased practice on the M sound. The M sound would appear throughout the lesson and in subsequent lessons to ensure skill mastery or firm responding over time. Why do we use direct instruction? Because this offers a strong, well-established body of research. Uh, this has been conducted since the 60s. In fact, the largest educational experiment in history called Project Follow-Through demonstrated that direct instruction model, when compared to other basic skills models as well as that, as well as that, as well as those that focused on an effective and cognitive curricula and techniques, direct instruction produced the highest student achievement levels in both basic skills and problem solving in a addition to higher effective scores. I want to show you that we have uh, a direct instruction cheat sheet in our Google Documents that you can access. Um, and it just goes through this. We've got the steps needed. We first start with model, and you've got an example. And then guided practice, another example. Independent practice, another example. And then here's an, we have multiple examples here. Okay, So you can access this. Uh, on, on our, uh, Google, in our Google Docs from our Blackboard site. And then also, let's just look at a short video of this classroom. Let's take a look at the definition for setting. It says, time and place in which the story occurs. Time and place in which the story occurs. Let's read this together. Setting, time and place in which the story occurs. Let's clarify that. So when I'm reading a, a, a story and I'm thinking about setting, I'm going to be reading about time. Everybody points to your, your watch. Time and place. Location in the story. B's tell A's. What is setting? In a complete sentence, you have five seconds. Go. Three, two, one. What is setting? Post way series of events that make up a story. Okay, that is the definition for plot this way. I'm actually looking for the definition for setting. What is setting? Oh, the, set, the definition for setting is actually time and place in which a story takes place. Class, is that correct? Yes! This way, that is exactly it. That is the definition of setting. Time and place in which the story occurs. All right, let's continue on. I'm checking. All right, so hopefully that helps, and thanks so much.